How's it going, Song of Ice and Fire fans? It's Grant from Cats Miniatures here, bringing you another episode where we look into the Season 4 changes. And it's not so much a step into Season 4 as a short paddle into Season 4, as we look at House Greyjoy. Because what is dead may never die, but rises again. Season 4 changes in hand? I think that's the, uh, the words. But yeah, without further ado... Let's start wandering the stony shore and get pillaging. How's it going, Song of Ice and Fire fans? It's Grant from Year Cats Miniatures, and today we're taking a, not another step, I'd say probably more of a, a very low level paddle, potentially a breaststroke, into our next uh, season four change where we're going to be looking at the Greyjoys. And I'm joined in this task by my good friend, James Sanford. How's it going, James? And have you brought your flippers and scuba diving gear? My water wings as well. Um, yeah, all good, thanks. All good, this end. Play more season four stuff. How are you feeling about season four? Yeah, pretty pretty good. Um, I tried some different Targaryen stuff uh, that's not Drogo. So that was pretty good. Some interesting combinations out there. So, yeah, this building has become... Pretty good. So there's there's a lot of more options. Everything's viable, and yeah, it's been it's been quite exciting to just throw some different bits to, together. Nice. Well, let's get cracking on these gradual changes, man. So <clears throat> up on screen now. So again, we'll go through the all the order of stuff in the same order as the change log. Up on screen now are the two attachments, Victorian Greyjoy, the Iron Captain, and Dagmar Clefjaw, Captain of the Foam Drinker. Both changes that we've already covered. Both changes that we know of have, have been universal changes to these. Um, specific abilities so obviously victorian will get the new version of overrun which now allows him to make a march action instead of a charge um either or and dagmar gets battle scars which is obviously the new version where you can choose between vicious highest attack die value and reroll attack dice um you get to choose one and you get to choose an additional one for each destroyed rank both um, good changes, both changes that I've been very vocal about my praise for. Do you think, obviously, I think it, oh, the new version of Overrun is going to work really well with Victorian because it, you know, he it, it wants to be moving, he wants to be building up momentum. Um, and the new version of Battle Scars is just, just 100% better than the old version anyway. Do you think these are going to make any difference to the Greyjoy uh, list building? Yeah, so as we said before, I think the changes to Battle Scars is going to see a lot more play anyway. Um, and certainly in the Jack Greyjoys where you've got a lot a choice of a lot of cheaper units where you can potentially throw Dagmar in and now you've got an option for you know versatility depending on what the unit you you want them to do. Um, you know, think looking at things like trappers and reavers and things like that, I, it just gives them that extra little bit of punch, um, which are, which they didn't really get that much use of before because well, they're a bit fragile. So if they took a pretty heavy hit you weren't building up enough tokens on your battle scars to be able to use them effectively outside of maybe iron makers so they should see a bit more play now and yeah victorian change pretty good he's gonna be flying around the board um yeah i, I quite like the idea of battle scars in um iron makers myself because being able to choose your re-rolls makes them quite good in uh, combat especially when you're going for those um those critical blows um, so that's it for the um, the attachment changes. Then we look at the Black Tide Chosen. Now, this is a, a hell of a change here. This has been a complete... It, it's a rework, but I, I feel to the same end as where we've sort of landed. Um, so we've seen a point decrease. Uh, gone down from 7 to a 6. We have seen Martial Training and Embolden both removed from the card. The morale has been improved from a 7 to a 6. I guess that's the counteract the embolden and the melee attack value has worsened from a three plus to a four plus and now hit on a, a four plus and they've got this brand new order first claim. So it reads each time a friendly NCU claims the bags, one black to a chosen unit gains one pillage token. While this unit has two pillage tokens, all friendly units in short range gain plus one to morale test rolls and suffer minus one wound from failing the panic test. So, this is a really nice ability for them. It gives them a little bit of um, sustainability, especially with the... Uh, it makes them very much a support unit, which is strange, because with Marshall um, training before, they were, they were quite quite good at hitting. But now these guys are more about 
getting it for these tokens and then basically just shotgunning them out to other units and supporting the other units that were around them, um, which I guess is what they were trying to achieve all along with this unit. I quite like them. I won't really know, I don't think, until I start playing them a little bit more, but have you got any initial uh, ideas or initial thoughts on the new Black Tide Chosen? Yeah, I think so. First claim, I think, is quite you know, thematic. They're a stalwart kind of unit, and they're making everyone around them better, which I think fits them quite well. It's an ability they don't already have. That's quite unique. Maybe a little bit concerned with their attack profile, worsening that generating pillage for them is going to be a bit more difficult, so divide the spoils is going to be a bit trickier to use. Mm-hmm. Because before they were a bit more hitty, especially with martial training, so you were getting more pillage so you could pass it out easier. Um, obviously, we know there's plenty of ways to be able to move pillage about. So, um, yes, maybe it will be a bit slower. But then also, I think, yeah, this, it's basically this is Iron Resolve in a, in a bubble, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good change. I think the th- with this unit, they've always tried to be a support unit and they never really kind of got it right. And I think six points puts them in a really good spot. Yeah, I think these will, I think we'll see these may well be like a one of. Yeah, obviously, though, to help to sort of build the um, their tokens, at least they've got that ability to be able to pull stuff off the money bags every time an NCU claims it. But that's, you know, that's a commitment to taking the bags, which is not always what you want to do. Not a bad ability to have. It's a nice change there for the Black Tide Chosen. Next up on screen, we have the Drowned Men. Now, the Drowned Men have just lost a wound. That's all they've done. They haven't gone down in points. There's no other ability change other than the fact that the Drowned God's Fanatics now is an innate ability that keeps them at three wounds. I'm a little bit... We obviously discussed this off-air, but I'm a little bit sort of disappointed with this change. I don't. I feel like these are going to see play a lot less now. But again, that is what they were going for with this with this update was trying to get stuff that people using use less to make them consider other things, you know, much like yourself and Drogo. Um, I think this is um, this will achieve that, but I think it's a bit of a shame because they're quite a nice um, tanky little unit that, that could be destroyed, but took a hell of a commitment from the opponent to get rid of them. How do you feel about them going down to three wounds? Yeah, I think... So at A, it was pretty difficult to one-shot these guys without you know some kind of assistance crit blow or extra hits and things like that now yeah i mean you could you could get a decent hit on them you could just kill them outright just with the tax without even to have worry about them taking a panic test so yeah i think they're obviously a lot more fragile and they're still four points yeah it's weird so i'm not sh- yeah i'm not they kind of feel like at three wounds they're um they're a three-point unit aren't they i think so i think that's, that's where they, they should have landed um even reduce them to three points, taking away their ability to hold objectives. I would have, I would have taken them for. Um, yeah, I think that would have been a fair trade. Then they literally they're just a support piece, aren't they? Yeah, like freedmen, you know, because we see them loads as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a change, a change to the drama. I think. Well, we may well still see them. They still have their ability to heal, you know, heal other units. They're still on the small base, so you can still tuck them away and, and just camp and hold objectives. Um, and if you ignore them on a five objective mission where well, you're going to have to do something because they're just going to sit there and score points all game and for a four point unit you kind of want that so they've still got a tactical advantage what i think you won't see anymore is lists that have two of them in you they might be a one of rather than a two of which is probably quite healthy yeah yeah grado has got plenty of four point units that they'll just be rotated in with something else you know yeah and next up on screen we've got the house hollow reapers the only change here is that they've changed Reapers further again for, I think, about the eighth time since their, their initial concept. So they now no longer uh, make the attack when they're destroyed. They've now changed it. It now says each time this unit performs a melee attack before rolling attack dice, if this unit has two pillage tokens, the defender becomes panicked. And if they fail to panic test from this attack, suffer plus one wound. I do quite like this change because I, I do like the panic token. It works well with the plus one wound. And if you consider some of the options Greyjoy's have, such as Euron, such as Ramsey uh, Snow, that gives them intimidating presence, this could really start pumping out the um, pumping out the panic damage as well as you know they're hit on a free plus, so it's not they're not in combat either. Relying on a unit to die to get anything from them always sucks. If, if I'm honest, I, I don't hate the idea of having to only way you're getting a maximum rules out of the unit being that they then can't use them anymore. I think this is a I think this is much nicer way of using House Hollow Reapers, and hopefully. We're somewhere near their uh, 
their final form. What do you think of these uh, House Hollow Reapers, James? Yeah, pretty good. I think you're right. Hit the nail on the head with Ramsey. Um, that's an eight-point monster. Yeah. Um, especially, obviously, with Reek in there. And, yeah, I think that's quite a nice little combination. That's going to do a lot of damage. Um, and its ability to heal a ton with Prey on Fear and Fueled by Slaughter. Yeah. I mean, even the one point, um, uh, the War Swan, the one that comes with their bot, um, just putting him in there. I mean, they're just going to be self-sufficient then, aren't they? And keeping themselves going, mitigating their um, their love of save. Yeah, great attack profile. I think these these guys are going to be back in again, which is pretty cool because they've got some really good miniatures. Yeah, really nice miniatures, mate. I've always I've always loved these. These have got to be my favourite um, House Greyjoy models, uh, these and the Iron Makers, but for different reasons. I love how tanky the Iron Makers look, and I love how aggressive this unit looks with a massive... Uh, Bardishes. It'd be nice to see him see him using on the board again. It might might have to start running um my Victorian list with two units and newt in there. Nice change, mate. Nice changes. Uh, next up, we have the Ironborn Trappers. So the only change here being is that the Trappers tools has now changed uh, from an enemy unit they're in combat with. It now reads uh, target one enemy within short range and line of sight of this unit. They become vulnerable or weakened if it has two pledge tokens. They become both instead. So. I quite like this. It allows you to camp and behind units and support from behind rather than have to be in combat because we know that once these guys are in combat, although they have disrupt, it doesn't take very long for them to not be in combat anymore because they're in your dead pile. I quite like this change. I think it's good. I think it's nice. It gives them more utility and units being able to do more stuff on the battlefield, I'm all about. What do you think on these uh, these new changes to the trappers? Yeah, I think, um, you, we again, they're competing at a four four point spot with other things in the Grey Drove faction, so giving them a little boost, making them a little bit more usable, I think we'll um we'll see them back to the forefront again. I mean, not that we didn't see them before, because for four points, what they bring is still pretty good. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Next up, we have the uh, the big daddies of Greyjoys. The uh, I've had some bad bad times against the uh, Eric's Greyjoys in the last uh, last edition, so I'm glad they got a little bit bit of a bit of a knockdown let's see we've got the silence men so their melee attack dice value is increased from 754 to a 765 their morale has gone from a 5 plus to a 6 plus and the biggest change that we see is a change to silence's infamy so this used to do minus one to enemy morale per piece token and minus one wound to the uh silence men failing morale checks uh sort of failing panic tests it's now changed it now says if this unit has two pillage tokens Enemies in short range suffer a minus one to morale test rolls. So it literally only affects the enemy units now. It has no impact onto the silence men themselves. The unit needed to change slightly. I don't know if that was the way to do it because I quite liked it, but they've still kept their, you know, their super sundering. They've still got Dauntless and they've still got, you know, they've got a decent attack profile. So I think they'll still be used and I think they'll still be used well. I just think it takes away some of the uh, additional panic damage they were doing. What do you think? Do you think we still see as many silence men? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I think the problem before was the combination with Balon um, made them a bit too oppressive. So I think tweaking them slightly means that they're not going to be quite as bad when they respawn for a second time. <laughs> I mean, plus all the he- healing in Greyjoys and the fact they were then reducing panic damage, it would just be quite quite difficult to sort of get rid of. And then they come back again, and then you're like, oh, <laughs> do this again. <laughs> Fine, then. I have to queue it twice. <laughs> um, yeah, but there was usually two units of them, so it's probably a third time. <laughs> um, I think I think, I think, think that was the problem. But I think this, this rounds them out. So I think they've lost some of their yeah, damage mitigation, but they've gained a, a more punch. So, which is what you're using them for, right? If you want defense, you're taking Iron Makers. If you want punch, you're taking these guys. Yeah. And look, you know, the end of the day, the gold company saw the seven points, and I felt like these were punching at the same at the same strength as Golden Company saw. So, the fact that Golden Company got um, slightly tweaked, you've got to just assume that science men are going to be tweaked as well. So, we'll start off with the first two interviews on the screen now Baron Black Tie, Blind Baron, and Tristan Botley, Lord of Lordsport. Blind Baron, so he's seen a very small change to his card. Um, now, whilst he influences a friendly unit, 
that unit may re-roll any morale test dice and gain the hardened ability. So it's the morale test uh, re-rolls that he's gained. It's a nice ability. You know, being able to re-roll, grade your morales can be a bit jippy at times. So it's nice to have that. And obviously, paired with hardened, it makes him a bit more of a tank unit. I don't know if it means we're going to see him as much as we did prior to the initial change he had when he the um, resilience built into him. It's, it's, you know, it's giving him something else for free, so that's quite a cool change. Do you think we'll still see the, um, or do you think we'll see Baron at all? So if you look at the changes we've just seen to Silence Men, it's almost like they they slot in together, don't they? Because you think they've lost they lost the morale and they lost their damage. So being able to then re-roll the morale tests is gonna you know that one bad panic test that you have on them. Well, re-rolling it, and now you should be okay. Plus, you're warning hardened on them to reduce the damage they take to keep your attack dice up. So, actually, I think we may start to see him come back in on the on Silence Men heavy list. I can see that. Next up, Tristopher Botley, Lord of Lords Ball. Again, uh, an NCU that sees just timeless changes over and over again. I can see what they're trying to do with him. Do I think they've got there this time? I'm not entirely sure, but I mean, it's a quite a good change anyway. It's basically turned him into a version of. Um, House Bolton's Tibble. So the top part he had anyway is the, the Panic and the Vulnerable Token. Uh, but the second part is what has changed. So once per game, when an enemy NCU activates, if Tristopher is not on the Tactics board, you may select one Tactic Zone. If that NCU claims that zone this turn, at the end of the turn, you may activate Tristopher. So basically, if you claim a zone that, you know, potentially you're, you're after, you know the opponent doesn't want... You can then activate Tristopher. I think it helps with the three versus three NCU because it allows you to double activate, basically, doesn't it? It allows you to put him onto the board, followed by one of your own NCUs, which then potentially can lock out your opponent's um, NCU on a turn that maybe you wouldn't have been able to lock him out. So that's quite good. Um, and obviously, you know, as we spoke about off air, it gives you options. You, know, you can manoeuvre and then charge or manoeuvre and shoot, potentially. It gives you lots of options. Um, I quite like it. I think it's one of these NCUs you have to play if we can really have a have a solid opinion on whether he's good or not. But just on your initial thoughts on that, James? Yeah, he's kind of weird. Um, you can't say that about him. That's what old uh, Asher, Asher said. That's why she don't marry him. He's got, uh, no, he's got a complex. No wonder he never stays the same for five minutes. He's constantly changing, trying to appease people like you. <laughs> but he is weird, right? He's a great yeah. guy. He should be out there like punching face and stuff. Instead, he's like poncing around on the tactics board. It's not really, not really the done thing if you're a oh, great guy. The shine on his hair, though, man. He definitely uses L'Oreal, doesn't he? Again, back to him being weird. He doesn't really fit with what the great are trying to do. So he's like the, he's like an oddball. But then I can certainly see him having. You're going to remember him for those games where he he completely flipped it and then the games where he sort of did nothing. I think he is a feast or famine character. And you're right, I think people that practice and know when to use him in the right situation, he's going to be amazing. But he's a lot more difficult to use than all the other options that they've got. So I don't know. I, time will tell. He, I suppose it gives Greyjoy an option for a control piece, which they don't really have. It was always sort of like the the, the, the free folk blocker when he back in the day because he used to be able to block the horses, but obviously that's not a thing anymore. So the second lot of NCUs we've got are Asher Greyjoy, would be Queen, and Aaron Greyjoy, the Damp Hair. Asher Greyjoy, would be Queen. This has been a bit of a rework of this ability. In fact, it's quite a, quite a major rework as we've been speaking about this off air. Um, so it's still influence ability each time, but now she's got the like the mother ability. I called it. It's basically when one of these NCUs that allows you to remove a condition token when they influence. Um, Captain Stark's got it. Daenerys has got it. Um, one of the, the uh, Martell guys have got it as well. Now, while influencing them for the unit, they gain plus one to morale test rolls for each piece token on it. But now, each time that unit passes a morale test, target one enemy is engaged with, that enemy suffers one hit for each pillage token on this unit. So there's quite a lot going on there with this card now. In fact... I'd argue it's probably it's, this should probably be a Night's Watch Tactics card, really. What do you think on the uh, on Asher Greyjoy? Do you think she'll see play? That's a lot. I think that's a lot of stuff. Good stuff there. I think I'll be running her. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we all know that all of the we'll call them the mothers uh, are all pretty popular, but she's just purely based on the token removal. They're really useful when you really need to get that weakened off. Which, hey, look, it works really well with what Silence Men. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think. She's kind of bumbled along in the background as an NCU choice, but I think now she's really good. Her downside is that her attachments are still really good. 
yeah still competing with the on-field choices but yeah i think she, she, she's definitely got play i think so mate. i definitely think so the last interview we have on screen is aaron Greyjoy, the damp hair so now we've seen I'm, i've always been really gutted that we don't see aaron as much as i feel that we should do i think he's such a quality character in the books um, and obviously, he's a he's a start set into you. So I would like to see him being a little bit more used from the from the offset. Um, this may change it slightly because it's less it's it's gone from being reliant on destroying a unit to uh, when they destroy a rank, they restore a wound. So basically, you can you know you can activate and you can charge, which heals your wound. Then attack. If it's a, if it's a good attack, you just draw one or two ranks. You hear another two wounds potentially. So yeah, there's um yes, I think it's got quite quite a good bit of play there. Now I think it's um I, I'm looking forward to potentially seeing him around a bit more. And I actually might start painting him because he's he's actually quite a nice model. I do something cool with a base, but this isn't a hobby hangout program. This is a season four change program. What do you think of Aaron Damp Hair? Yeah, much better, right? Um, if only he'd been this way from the beginning. Uh, because the one wound per action was kind of a bit meh. Yes, he had some uses um, before. I mean, obviously, you came out before they clarified the charge as being one action rather than two separate. So he was good for that. But otherwise, he was he was very you brought him for a very specific reason. Um, now, again, I think we'll see him see him more. He fits really well with what Grey Drivers are trying to do, which is knock ranks off and keep the healing going, which is what he's bringing yeah well we'll talk about the end but i, I feel like gradual's are really really finding their their track at the minute because i think that what they i think they're now beginning to hit the stride in what they were trying to achieve when they released gradual is in that momentum build up so that's the end of our interviews james so cheers for that let's get into the um the tactics card so we have three uh tactic cards we need to look at um and for the most part they're genuinely just complete overhaul so we have Finger Dance, Iron Price, and Raiding Call on screen now. So Finger Dance has had a complete rework. Now, this was absolutely potent when you could put it on your archers and get the Vulnerable Token thrown out. They stopped us doing that in the last um, last revision. So now it's changed. It's now more like the Red Priestess for Baratheons, but a little bit better. Um, so you start a friendly turn. You target one friendly combat unit, attach this card to them until the end of the game. While attached, when performing a melee attack, before attack dice are rolled, the attacker may suffer up to two wounds. For each wound suffered, choose one. The defender becomes panicked. The defender becomes vulnerable. This attack may re-roll any attack dice. So it's still melee only now. This would have been really good had it been ranged and the Red Priestess allows you to put it on Lightbringers, which makes her really good. But it's still not a bad, not a bad card. It's a lot better than it was. I definitely feel like this, n- not having your opponent take advantage of your card, it definitely a, a, makes for a better game. I quite like this card. Well, how do you feel about the changes for, for Finger Dance? Yeah, I think this is, it's, it's pretty good, right? Because we know they've got lots of healing in there. So this will pair well with things that have got Fueled by Slaughter, Dauntless, um, where actually taking one or two wounds doesn't really matter because you can just regenerate them back at the end of the attack action. And the tokens play really well into what they're trying to achieve, which is break ranks. So, yeah, really good. Uh, next up, we have the Iron Price. So it's in a completely rework his card. So the old card is on screen now. I'm not going to read it all out because that is there's a lot of text there. It's been replaced with this new version. So the new version is... Start a friendly turn, target one friendly combat unit and choose one. That unit may remove one condition token. You may remove one pillage token from that unit. If you do, it restores two wounds plus one wound for each of its destroyed rank. Or that unit attacks using its highest attack die value this turn. You may remove one pillage token from that unit. If you do, it may re-roll any attack dice this turn. So what we quite like is the fact you get something to start with. And you get additional stuff if you spend the pillage token, whereas before you had to spend the pillage tokens. Now, this is a hell of a wound, wound healing card now, because it's basically Eddard Stark as a card if you um, remove one pillage token. Um, and obviously, the highest attack value and reroll attack dice is powerful as well, especially when you have units such as Silence Men, even Reavers uh, will get a lot of benefit from this card. Yeah, I like it. It's made, it's, it's, taken the card from being 
a meh card to actually quite useful. Um, how do you feel about the iron price? Yeah, I think uh, this is this is universally easier to use now. It was before. I mean, when I play Grey Drives, this was the card. It was going. It was going in the bin. Like the effects that you got back for ditching pillage was not worth it. Versus having pillage, and now there's easier ways to generate pillage and move it around. This card becomes much easier to play, and you don't have to use pillage if you don't want to. It's straight up easier to 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 use. So yeah, good good change. Yeah, I agree on that. Definitely agree on that. One. Uh, and the uh, raiding pool. So they basically made this now like like a, like a version of. Um... Supply aid. So it's now when a friendly grade unit, uh, infantry unit activates, alluding to that mythical grade or cavalry unit we might ever, might get one day. Remove up to three models and up to one pillage token from one other friendly grade or infantry unit in long range. Restore one plus that many wounds to this unit and place the removed pillage token on this unit. If any player controls money bags, one friendly grade or infantry unit gains one pillage token. It's a much better version of Grading Call. It's just basically made it in line with Supply Aid, but with a little bit of pillage involved in it as well. I quite like it. It does pretty much the same thing, but, you know, less wounds, isn't it, on your on the unit that's um that's taking the wounds to heal. So, yeah, I mean, how would you feel about Raiding Call? It's just, it's, I think it's just worded better, isn't it? Um, it just falls in line with other things within the game. So we've got a similar ability seen in other places, as we said, Supply Aid. So, yep. Much better, less wounds to heal more makes total sense. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so that's all the uh, the changes for House Graduate, and there's loads of positive changes. There's a couple of uh, of um, teeth grinding choices, like what they did to a uh, drown men. But I think there's lots of more positive stuff to be taken from that. And I really, honestly, do think as I mentioned it, alluded to it earlier on in the recording. But I honestly feel they're getting Graduates to the point that they wanted them to be when they were released. So having this momentum mechanic to keep it rolling to keep the healing going i mean there's loads of healing graduates so it allows you to make mistakes and potentially patch it up quite quickly but you have to be quick patching up because if you take a second hit you're probably going to be gone and building the pillage tokens and be able to use pillage tokens but not always spend them now i think it's really good i think they're definitely getting graduate to be the premier aggressive faction that um that the pillage mechanic really does work with it. Well, originally, I've wondered if it did even get the pillage mechanic to work, or if they maybe had to change where they were going with it. But I think they're they're finding their feet. So my, hat, my hats off to the, the designers. They're knocking it out of the park. Uh, how do you feel about the um, the gradual changes overall, James? Yeah, I think you're totally right. So they're where they should have been from the beginning, really. Also, with with the last couple of updates I've had, obviously you've now got speed increases to infantry and you've got a lot more healing which makes up for the fact that the faction doesn't have cavalry and are we ever going to see cavalry probably not it's not a part of their identity right giant squid riders <laughs> giant squid riders yeah i mean cavalry yeah movement one <laughs> flop about a little bit and then just, then just die what they've done i think for game balance is they've they've given them mitigation for not being able to field in-house cavalry um so it means that if they're walking into a uh, all cavalry army, the Thraki, um, Tullys, uh, then they actually have uh, a way to play the game rather than just be absolutely just walked all over. So yeah, I think it's great changes. I think it balances well to play into other factions. I think you've got obviously the biggest drawback was always morale, but there's ways to build around that now. So you could build a list that is a bit tanky on the morale if you're playing into things like Lannisters and Martells. So I think they've now got the right tools to be able to deal with everything in the game. So yeah, I think they're they're really good good spot. Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. All right, well, cheers for your time and thanks to everyone for listening. If you enjoyed the content today, if you enjoyed mine and James's conversation, uh, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more A Song of Ice and Fire content. And keep your eyes peeled for some more Season 4 changes. Cheers for your time, James. Yep, thanks very much. I'll speak to you soon. Take care, mate. Bye. Bye.